Nietzsche said, he who fights with monsters might take care lest he thereby become a monster. Now she says he is wrong. Missing you, starts. Kim was charged with seven counts of murder. He's almost acquitted, but there was a crucial informant about one case, so he's barely sentenced to 15 years. The victim's family scream and howl with resentment, whom a young girl, Heeju watches. Three months earlier, her father, a detective sergeant stopped by his house to make Heeju breakfast at dawn. Getting out of a taxi, a man bumped into him, after which blood gushed from his neck. He tried to go closer to Heeju, dragging his cassette player. She, sleeping, turned her face to him, and he died watching her face. In the morning, his fellow detectives visited his house, because he hadn't got back. They talked about the sergeant's runaway wife, who had got into a gambling debt and made the family move to a basement apartment. When Dayoung picked up a cake, Ben asked what for and he answered it was sergeant's birthday. Opening the door, he found some blood on the stairs, so loading his gun, sneaked in the house, when Heeju was hugging the sergeant and stroking his cheek. Now, she's sitting listening to her father's cassette player in front of the police office. Dayoung approaches her, and asks her if she's waiting for someone. After 15 years, when Kim's released, Dayoung dashes tofu in his head, and says he is yet to be punished for the six murders, which he denies. Dayoung never buys it, and puts his cigarette still burning in his pocket. Watching a classic concert on TV, Heeju feels moved and writes down Nietzsche's famous quote that, without music, life would be a mistake. She puts the note on the wall, which is already full of her notes. On the roof, she watches her mother at the window. When her husband appears, she suddenly blocks his way, which makes him surprised. She says as he's been unkind to women, he's going to die soon. She cleans the corridor in the police office. Meanwhile, Dayoung gathers $10 from everyone in the office, which is her paycheck. On the other hand, Kim searches Minsu using the app looking up phone numbers, and calls one by one. Detective Yun puts a strawberry milk on her desk and puts her jacket on her. Dayoung, who is a sergeant now, orders him to keep an eye on Kim with Cha. As Cha is a new detective and knows nothing about Kim, Yun explains him, warning he's really dangerous. When he killed his lover, he broke her arms behind her back, and choked her putting a plastic bag over her head. He likes to put dog leashes on the victims, and even chop the bodies up. In a cheap hotel room, Kim rushes to a prostitute and remembers killing his lover, when he twisted her arms behind her back, and put a plastic bag over her head like Yun said. Getting back, the prostitute is angry, calling him a pervert, and the pimp goes peeing, which Heeju is watching from a distance. Someone comes next to the pimp, and pees. Then he turns toward the pimp, which makes him angry. The pimp says he'll kill him, but he says no way, and slashes his neck. Watching him dying, he cleans his knife with his pee, after which he gets in the pimp's car to take care of the prostitute too, and Heeju watches all of it. Getting back home, she's lying on the floor, which is filled with newspaper clippings about murder cases. She wonders who's doing her job instead of her, which makes everything more complicated. The next day, the pimp and the prostitute are found dead in the car, and Dayoung is told Kim has never been out of the hotel. He asks Kim why he killed them, but he says he's the one who wonders who did it, and advises Dayoung not to hurry not to miss the real murderer again. While he goes back, he bumps into Heeju, which makes her fall down. Though annoyed, he holds out his hand to her, reads her name tag, and goes away. Dayoung orders Yun to find the identity of the informer on Kim 15 years ago. Meanwhile, Hisu pours Clorox in the bathroom sink, and washes her hands like crazy. That night, on the roof, she watches her mom go back to her house, but soon she gets beaten up by her husband. When he comes out, Heeju stops him. He tells her to get lost, and then she says it's time he should get lost, hitting his head with a stone. She keeps hitting him in the head, saying assault and theft carry the death penalty in Saudi Arabia, and the law has to be fair and equal to all citizens. Next morning, Kim takes a picture of the detectives and goes for a jog, soon noticing some people gathering around a body, killed the way he is used to. Dayoung gets angry a warrant isn't granted, though it's third murder after he's released, and the murder pattern is just the same as Kim's, but Ben says they've got no evidence. In a butcher shop, Min Su, who killed the pimp and prostitute says he has no choice but to see him. He unlocks the door of Kim's room with a needle, and goes in, but Kim's not there. Min Su hits the light in the bathroom, and grabs the doorknob, Kim stabs his hand from inside and tries to stab his head. At that moment, Dayoung calls Kim outside and comes in through the open door. When Kim watches Minsu behind him and says he has a guest, Dayoung turns around and points his gun, but he's already gone. Watching the dark windows of her mother's house, Heeju gets anxious. She rings the bell, but no one answers, and when she tries to open the door, 
it's not locked. Getting inside, she finds her mother killed herself, holding Hiju's picture. She says her mother left her without a word again. At home, she starts to cut the victim's pictures off, and classifies them into stabbing, and cutting, realizing there are two. Checking Kim's call history, Dayoung finds out all the receiver's name is Min Soo, but the informer's name is Min Soo too, from the same orphanage as Kim, which means Kim killed his lover, his friend Min Soo made him caught, and now Kim's eager to find Min Soo. On the other hand, carrying a copy about Min Soo, Hiju buys the biggest dog leash in the shop. Now Dayoung sure Kim will try to kill Min Soo, so has the detectives follow Min Soo and Kim, and protect Min Soo from Kim for sure. Kim calls another Min Soo, and this time he recognizes the voice. Getting back, he finds a paper stuck in the door, which is about Min Soo, and he remembers a moment with Min Soo, hanging out killing dogs. A truck loaded with an enormous number of empty bottles stops in front of a house, and Hiju gets out of it, saying to put down them on the front yard. When Min Soo gets back home, the lights don't work, so he just walks in, and finds out the floor is filled with broken glass. Then over the glass, Hiju throws an electrical cable onto the glass, and he faints having got an electric shock. Seeing calluses on his thumb, she recognizes he likes to cut and used to be his helper. She says he should feel lucky to be used as bait. Kim lies in bed to sleep and notices something's there. Uncovering the blanket, there's a wrapped body put on a dog leash, which is dead Min Soo. Then Hiju rushes to him and stabs into his third rib, which makes him unable to move. When he asks who she is, she answers she's the one who thought of only him for a very long time, choking him with a dog leash, which makes him faint. The police barge in, and Dayoung notices the blood is still wet, so orders the detectives to find him in the building. When Cha finds lovers hurt bad in the next room, so they're carried in the ambulance. Sitting on the bed, Dayoung notices blood flowing on the floor, and finds a dead man under the bed. In the ambulance, the rescue worker tries to keep her awake, during which Kim smashes his head with a fire extinguisher, and separating medical scissors, stabs her. Hiju buys a ticket for the London Symphony Orchestra, saying he will have been caught by the performance day. Excited, she brings out a pretty dress, underwear, and cosmetics, which she has never worn. A detective reports Kim seems unrelated to the death of Min Soo given his injury, according to the profiling and crime scene reports. Swiping the detective's pictures he took, Kim calls the newspaper. Hiju finishes knitting a scarf and puts it into a box, and there are a lot more boxes. In the post office, waiting her turn, she spots a newspaper headline Kim claims his innocence, which means her plan failed and he can be released again. The chief gets furious, and asks how Kim can be the suspect, with the pictures of the detectives he took when the murders happened, and without any evidence. He orders Ben to wrap the case up in this week. Hiju hands Dayoung bread because he's not eating all day. She says the only way for the evil to win is when the innocent do nothing, so he should be courageous for justice like her. In the internet cafe, Kim smokes and the clerk asks him not to, which is ignored. Getting back, he remembers he's seen the face on the wanted list. Kim googles about the victim killed by his pattern, and finds out the victim's wife was the Sir Jurant's wife 15 years ago, and has a daughter. After a while, Dayoung arrives in the internet cafe, makes the people gather in front of the wall, and finds him hiding in the corner. They start a struggle, and Dayoung tries to take him down, but he takes the scissors on the floor. Running away from Dayoung, he rushes and stabs Cha, and drives away. Now the police are everywhere to catch Kim, who enters the police office so naturally. Then Hiju takes her stuff from her desk, and after some hesitation, leaves. On her way back, she spots Kim in the office. She knows he's looking for her. He approaches an officer, and pretending to be Cha, asks for the address of the sergeant who passed away 15 years ago. The officer says that should be Hiju's father, and then Kim remembers the name tag of Hiju. She visits a pet shop and buys another dog leash. Getting back home, she puts her dress and cosmetics in the closet. She doesn't understand why Nietzsche said to take care not to become a monster when fighting with monsters. She believes now that God is dead as he said, a monster is needed. Kim walks down the stairs to her house, taking out the scissors. When the sensor light goes off, she rushes and stabs him, stabbed by him at the same time. Headbutting him, she runs away. Now all the police are dispatched to her house. She rushes into the mountain, and he follows. Running desperately, she calls Dayoung, and all the police make a U-turn. He catches her in the middle of a puddle, and dashes her into the water, but she holds a stone and hits him in the head. She arrives in the playground, and starts to ride on a swing, standing. She puts the dog leash on her neck, and says it's time both of them should be punished, jumping to the sky. Kim stares at her, and the police rush to them. 
Dae Young holds her in his arms, crying. Kim is sentenced to death for seven counts of murder, in front of the police wearing mufflers Heeju made. Dae Young cries seeing the floor of Heeju's house, and remembers she said the only way for the evil to win is when the innocent do nothing. For more videos like this, remember to subscribe and hitting the like button helps this channel continue. Thanks for watching.